Hi, and welcome to the COVID recession period. Um, I like to read sometimes uh, and share with you read, um, listeners uh, stories that I'm reading. This is uh, Kevin Stoda's channel, but I do hope you um, look at my family's channels too, like um, Vic Barr's channel and uh, uh, Kenzie Mask's channel. Right now, I'm going to be sharing with you, though, um, what I consider important uh, articles that I've been uh, reading lately. Okay, uh, it's the end of the school year. There's pandemic. People are unemployed. Um, people are worried about getting sick. Many people are jobless. Some of my students went homeless during the last uh, weeks. Uh, one mother went homeless for one of my students. Um, earlier, even before the pandemic hit, uh, I had a student whose uh, sister was taken by ICE. So the world's looking pretty slim, but there are some good signs. Uh, things could happen over the next few months, especially if progressives really stand up and push for them. Um, I think we shouldn't put off doing that as progressives. Um, remember also, I'm Kevin Stoda and I'm running for President of the United States. You can vote for me on the Republican ticket in any state. I am uh, Kevin Stoda. I'm running as a Lincoln Republican against Donald Trump. Uh, I came across a uh, writing by Dr. Jerry Brown, How to Conquer the Pandemic. Uh, how to Conquer a Pandemic, excuse me. How to Conquer a Pandemic. It was in the uh, Times of a few weeks ago. Uh, Finding Hope was the title. Uh, and I hope that uh, you can get out of it what I'm sharing with you. That there is hope and uh, we just have to uh, push it through uh, go out there find uh, work uh, get in the streets if we need to in a way that's safe to let the government know that we don't uh, want the status quo we want to have health care and stuff like that so i'm writing i'm reading from dr jerry brown's how to conquer a pandemic from time magazine dated um i'm sorry Dated, uh, I can't believe it. Anyway, uh, April 27th, May 4th. It was a double issue. One of the most important lessons I learned from fighting the Ebola outbreak in Liberia is that you have to be prepared before you an epidemic reaches your own doorstep. You have to um, you have less to lose if you make adequate preparations and don't get hit than by waiting for the disease. By then you could be overwhelmed and not able to contain it. Early preparation is key. In the current pandemic, things were, are getting scarier every day in Liberia. We have limited capacity in many ways, ranging from human resources to equipment, because many facilities are not prepared to handle cases of severe respiratory symptoms related to COVID-19. They have begun to turn away patients, which may worsen the health burden in Liberia. So far, all the patients are responding to a treatment, so people think we are not saying the truth about how bad this will be. The same happened in the Ebola crisis. Until people saw that others were dying, they had doubts that the disease existed. They won't believe it until they see it. bodies. If they're not seeing bodies, they're not going to believe. That said, while caring for patients in extraordinary circumstances, you must Remember, it is God who saves lives. You may provide the right medication and have the right equipment, but if someone is bound to die, no matter what you do, you will end up losing the person. For me as a physician, this is the most painful part of my service. There are no ventilators here to provide ICU care for patients. If someone with COVID-19 comes to me in severe respiratory distress, I can't do anything beyond uh, provide supportive care uh, and slowly he or she may die in my presence. I will feel saddened about it, but I will not feel guilty. The best I can do as a physician is to use my knowledge and available resources to save as many lives as possible. However, I have learned never to give up on any of my patients until he or she gives up the ghost. The patients you least expect to survive tend to live to tell the story. As we tackle this pandemic, we must not despair because we lost one of our colleagues or loved ones. Our goal is to save as many lives as possible. 
we need to abide by all the safety measures as much as possible. If we get sick, we can't do our jobs. One of the best ways to support frontline health care workers is first to appreciate their sacrifices. They are making an every day to save lives in the face of limited resources. It doesn't have to be by providing them gold or diamonds or even money, but just a word of appreciation and encouragement. It is an insurance assurance that they are not alone. The health workers are our soldiers on the front line. We need to equip them if we want them to fight effectively. They need a safe work environment and the tools to execute their duties as we would do in warfare. We have to look for all available ammunition and sophisticated weaponry so they can fight the fight and win the fight. This pandemic has proven that no one nation is supreme. It is time we forget our differences and fight the disease